Football helmets cushion the cranium, helping players score touchdowns without losing IQ points. Helmets have been part of the sport for over a century. At first made of leather, they switched to padded plastic helmets in the 1950s, and they've turned out to be great shock absorbers for the skull. In a game of tackles and tumbles, a helmet is essential equipment. To make one, plastic pellets are suctioned into a machine that melts and molds them into a helmet. This fist-like device shapes the inside of the shell. It takes just seconds for the shell to harden. A robot collects it and transfers it to a conveyor. It's quite a lineup. The shells move into position for a trimming. They clip off an extra bit of plastic left over from the molding. Next, a robot drills up to nine holes in the shell. The holes will be used to attach a liner, face guard, and various pieces of hardware. This robot works far more quickly than a human can performing all the drilling in just 30 seconds. It's programmed to be extremely precise, doing a flawless job with computerized precision. Then the robot flexes back to receive the next shell. A worker collects the drilled shell and moves a new one into position for the robot. They rough up the outside of the helmet shell with an orbital sander. This preps it for priming and painting. The shells spin as they spray them with paint. It's a high-grade automotive brand. They get three coats, because this paint job will have to be rugged enough to survive the game of football. The helmets cure in the open air for up to 18 hours. A chemical reaction occurs, causing the paint to harden to a glossy finish. Not every helmet is painted. Sometimes football teams prefer tinted plastic. It all depends on the look the team is going for. They attach labels, including cautionary information, trademark logos, and the date of production. This padding is made of vinyl and foam. They snap it in place in the crown of the helmet. The padding for the side and back is made of the same material. They reinforce the back with a plastic bumper. A helmet from each production run undergoes an impact test. The helmet has been fitted on a head-like form equipped with sensors. The technician calibrates the sensors using a computer. He presses a button and the helmeted head falls. This mimics the effect of a player's head hitting the ground in a tackle. The computer then measures the force of the impact on the head form. Once the production run gets the OK, they attach the face guard. It's made of plastic-coated steel and has been custom-produced at a different factory. There are dozens of face guard styles for the player to choose from. This helmet is now looking pretty fierce, but it's not ready for action yet. It needs chin strap and cup. This machine uses heat to transfer a foil logo onto the polyester chin straps. It also cuts them to the correct length. Once a chin cup has been sewn to the strap, they fasten the assembly loosely to the helmet. Later, it will be precisely fitted to the player. This helmet is now almost ready for kickoff. There's a final inspection, and then they wrap it up, complete with the manual and fitting instructions. It has taken less than a day to manufacture this football helmet. It's designed to hold up to thousands of impacts, because in the game of football, protection against head injury is a crowning achievement.